So here is another um, measure of central tendency or measure of center, measure of middle that uh, is extremely useful to us. As a matter of fact, this is the one we prefer to use whenever we can. You always start by using the mean and then if something about your data means you can't use the mean or shouldn't use the mean, then you move to something else. Usually you move to the median. So this is the way it goes. Use the mean if you can. If you can't, use the median. Uh, and if you have purely categorical, unordered data, well, you can't use anything except the mode, so you're kind of stuck there. But generally, with numerical, use the mean. If you can't, then use the median. So let's learn about this mean of which I have spoken. This mean, what is it? So our learning objectives here are to understand what the mean is and how to calculate it. But you already know how to calculate it, so this is going to be putting it into statistical form. The typical observation in any group of data is the middle score. And the mean is one kind. So this is the most popularly used middle score. This is the middle score that everybody uses. This is the measure of central tendency that everybody uses and they learn in elementary school. You add up all the numbers and divide by the number of numbers that there are. So here's some things about the mean. It's more delicate, it's more sensitive than the median. So its value does get affected by outliers in data and by skewed data. So we don't like that about it. And if you have a lot of skew in a data, or even a significant amount of skew, or some outliers in your data, often you abandon the mean and you have to use the median instead because the mean, it's a little hothouse flower. It's a performance automobile, and as soon as the uh, pavement is a little bit bumpy, you can't drive it. You'll, you'll just tear the bottom out of that thing. You'll just rip up the underside of it. And the median is your four-wheel drive. Uh, all-terrain Humvee thing that works everywhere, but it goes slowly. So anyway, when the mean works, it's more useful to us, especially because of its mathematical properties. And one of its properties is that every single value in the data was used to calculate the mean. So no matter what happens to every value, if you change the value in the, of the data of one observation in the data, just a tiny, tiny bit, make it a little higher, a little lower, the value of the mean changes. Maybe only a tiny bit, but it does change. The mean is sensitive to everything, and we love that. It's like French democracy, where you, or so I've heard, that you, that people directly vote without an electoral college. Um, so you probably already know the formula. This is the formula. But let's put it into statistical form. But before we can do that, you have to learn about the summation operator. If you already know how this works, just skip past this part. Sum of x means add up all the values of x. And in statistics, x usually means a big list of numbers. x is a variable, so x is all of the values collected from an entire group of cases. So x is a little box that holds lots of numbers. So sum of x means add up all of those numbers. So sum, the summation operator isn't actually a new process. It's just a different way of doing an old process. It's just addition, but used with um, a lot of values at once. So let's say x is some variable that has values of 3, 4, 4, 5, and 8. Sum of x means add up all those x values. So add them all up, that would be 24. If I did this right, and I don't have time to check it now, so let's hope I did it right when I wrote this. The sum of quantity x plus 5, is, in other words, this parentheses around the x plus 5, means first you add up what's going on inside the parentheses. And when you have multiple numbers, that means do it for every single value. So instead of sum of 3, 4, 4, 5, 8, you're going to have sum of, well, we'll show you. You're going to have, have the sum of 3 plus 5, and 4 plus 5, and 4 plus 5, and 5 plus 5, and 8 plus 5. So each x value gets, gets added to 5. Then, after you get all that done, then you add them all up. And so in this case, the sum of x plus 5 is 49. But if you have sum of x plus 5 with no parentheses, then first, you just go left to right. This is addition. So you add up all the values of x first, then you add 5. So all the values added up are 24. Add 5 to that, that's 29. These orders of operations will make a big difference when you're trying to work out um, any of your calculations because we often have a summation operator in almost anything that we do. So the mean... Add up all the numbers and divide by n. The reason we love the mean more than any other is that the sample mean is a good estimator of the population mean. So if you have a sample and you calculate a mean from that, then that is your best estimation of the population mean whenever the population mean mu is not known. And any sample is an estimate of the population parameter that corresponds to it, but the mean is an especially useful estimator because it has some nice mathematical properties. So we use it whenever we can. And here's the formula. The mean 
is the sum of x divided by n. That's add up all the values and divide by the number that there are. n is the number of things you have, and sum of x is add up all the values. So that's the population formula. If you have all the values in the entire population, this is the population formula. And in fact, it's exactly the same as the sample formula. We just use a different symbol to represent the result. If it's a sample, we use x bar, x with a bar over the top of it. That's the mean. And sometimes people remember to use a lowercase n for sample. Uh, we, that flips around. I use uppercase n just as often as anything else. The, the conventions slip around, and so my conventions are slippery. So here's an example. The mean number of years between tornadoes for, I don't know, four different trailer parks in Arkansas or something like that. See, I just slandered an entire state. So what's the mean? You can figure that yourself, or I will move on and show you. The mean is the sum of x over n. So you add up all the x values, you divide by 4, 6.53, really easy. You guys know how to do this. So that's the mean, the end. You figured this out.